do you like or hate Hollywood Brown? You probably don't like. Him, I, I love Hollywood. I, I really think Holly, as a even person, even after he said even after what he said on his way out about the Ravens or no, I I understand where he's coming from. Um, that it's just not the right offense for. Him. I said that when he got drafted. I, I love the player. I love the guy. The dude. I want his jersey. And if he was still on the Ravens, I'd probably have a Hollywood five. But with actually with Hollywood instead of Brown, um, that'd be cool. Yeah, actually, that would be pretty dope. But it just it wasn't a great fit. It's that's the uh, kind of like I'm gonna make a weird comparison. It's like the girl you like, but it doesn't work out as a relationship. You can still be friends. Like I, I think I see, that's I see that. that's how I feel with Hollywood because he had some really great moments. He was an unreal in the Titans playoff game, the first one. Actually, both of them. He was yeah. unreal in the the um, the Bills playoff game, and. If the wind's not 70 freaking miles per hour, he has a 50 yard touchdown and drops his nuts on Buffalo. So I, I don't know. I don't have any ill will towards Hollywood. I get it. It's a business. I think he made the, I think it's a win for him. I think it's a win for Kyler. I think it's a win for Lamar. I'll get back to that. I think it's a win for the Ravens. I think it's a win for the Cardinals. I think it's a win for Eric DaCosta. I think it's a win for Steve Kime. I, everyone's a winner here besides DeAndre Hopkins, but everyone's a winner here. And I think it's, it's one of those trades that I had hadn't thought about it. I hadn't thought about trading Marquise Brown. I know he was like kind of itching for it, but it's like, okay, he's going to be the wide receiver one. He's going to get 140 targets, you know? Okay. You're going to win more this year. And then, Oh, this, this makes sense. This is a win-win trade. Those kinds of trades are rare, but um, I do think that's a, a big dub. I've recently the... experienced a win-win trade. What was that? The Stafford golf trade. I, I mean, was that really a win for the I mean, Lions, though? Yeah, the Lions I mean, they're going to... It's a rebuild move. They're going to be better. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's not terrible. So. Oh, Splash, I have a proposal for you, by the way. Yes. How about instead of the Ravens keep trying to draft a wide receiver who doesn't get the ball, what if they drafted a tight end in the first and second round and went like Aaron Hernandez, Rob Gronkowski with Brady and just let Lamar throw to the tight ends up the team all day long? Because uh, that's what... Because obviously he's second better at doing tight end alongside Mark Andrews for that. Uh, yeah, you guys do realize they drafted two tight ends, right? <laughs> well, like how early though? Like, I like I mean, uh, like I mean, like were t- look, okay. The, like I, I want them to I pick this... like I want them to pick like a legitimate stud tight end and have two like McBride, like yes, like a leg- okay. like one of the top tight ends in the draft, like something like that. Okay, and just go ham I... on t- a tight end. Okay, I I like where you're going with it. Um, I'm gonna make a side point about the Patriots. I really wish they had experimented more with Aaron Hernandez in the backfield. That was just unreal. When it, it they, they tried it once against Denver in the playoffs, they murdered the Denver front. When Aaron Hernandez had the ball in his hands, stop. That, that was one of the craziest sequences I've ever seen. Anyways, Baltimore is, to me, doing this. And I, I talked about it on the space that the Baltimore receiving core is probably receiver core 31 or receiver core 32 because I forgot the Falcons drafted to Drake London at eight <laughs> totally forgot that happened um so yes i get that but there are so many good wide receivers and good tight ends in the nfl that having the worst receiver core in the nfl is like being the worst ace starter in baseball like okay you're still like one of the better pitchers in baseball so i think this is a bit of the situation the ravens find themselves in they're looking at the rest of the league they are seeing kenny galladay on the hook for 20 million dollars with the giants cap this year they are seeing 30 million dollars a year for tyree kill Devontae adams deandre hopkins and they're like we're going to have a good enough receiver core because the, the idea is to win a Super Bowl. It's not to have the best receiver core. It's to win a Super Bowl. And Baltimore is saving money in the receiver core, which is hilariously expensive. It's the second highest paid position behind quarterback outside of Aaron Donald. Aaron Donald's worth every penny of that, by the way. Yeah. It's 100%. the second most valuable week. position from a money perspective. And the Ravens are thinking, hmm, well, instead of having one superstar receiver and taking cuts everywhere else we're going to have a bunch of guys that can do one or two good things for us and improve at other positions have two all pro corners have a perennial pro bowl defensive interior in calais campbell have an all pro tight end have an all pro tackle 
<clears throat> pay for another tackle that's pretty good. Pay for a guard that's pretty good. Draft a center in the first round. And you're you're filling in all these puzzle pieces. And sure, like the receiver piece of the puzzle isn't great. I get that. And it's worse than the rest of the league. But I don't think it's bad. It's like... <clears throat> Um, I don't know, like Ian Anderson pitching in the Braves rotation. He's probably the fifth best starter right now on the team. Uh, Morton's been horrendous. Morton's yeah. probably the fifth best starter on the team. He'd be the number three starter on most teams. You know, if, if you're, mm -hmm. uh, if some luck balances out, like he's not atrocious, but it's just, oh, he's on the Braves. He's the bottom of the pecking order now, or Strider yeah. to be the bottom of the, like there's, there's no, talent there. Good. And He's pitching tonight, by the way. Go Braves. Um, <laughs> like, I like Bateman a lot. And that's it was even before the Ravens drafted him. It's like he is a Michael Thomas clone. And he's not gonna he's not gonna break six year touchdowns like Tyreek Hill. He's not gonna be the smoothest route runner like a Devontae Adams. Or a, he's not gonna be Jamar Chase. I'm not asking him to be Jamar Chase. I'm asking him to be the 30th best receiver in the NFL. You can win with that. Mm -hmm. And I think people get a are, are distorted in the last few years of oh well, you have to have a, an elite receiver to win the title okay cooper cup was not elite before 2021 so if your idea is you have to have an elite receiver now it the rams didn't have an elite receiver they had two really yeah. good receivers and they, they had an elite OBJ duo i'll say yeah that's fair duo. yeah that's why a top five duo <clears throat> and then the the bucks same thing you have eventually three wide receiver ones antonio brown wasn't in the discussion to begin the season but Evans and Godwin, like borderline top 10 guys. Okay, that's fine. Tyree Kill, to me, is the only wide receiver in the last 15 years since Marvin Harrison in 06. The only, like, legit top five receiver heading into the season to then win the Super Bowl. And that comes with the caveat that he's playing with a Hall of Fame quarterback. He's yeah. playing with a Hall of Fame tight end. And he, he's probably not even the best pass catcher on the darn team. So, I... I think the receiver position is from a money perspective overvalued and you look at R Bateman and I, I don't know why people are just out on Bateman. Like Michael Pittman had nearly identical numbers to Bateman. Bateman had 12 more yards. Pittman had a couple extra targets, essentially the same. And both of them missed like a month with injury. Pittman doubled his yards, six touchdowns. So he had 1,100 yards almost, six touchdowns. That's a good season. And the same similar draft position as well. Bateman was 27. Pittman was uh, 34. Just the jump. And I think that it's reasonable to say Bateman's going to have more targets this year. He's going to be more in tune with Lamar Jackson because he only played four or five games with Lamar last year. Um, or I think it was a couple more than that. But he was like coming off of an injury. And then Lamar got hurt at the end of the year. He missed the Chicago game as well. And I think signs are pointing up for Bateman. And if Bateman is the 30th best receiver in the NFL, 35th best receiver in the NFL, that's enough to do something with. That is teams having a having an X receiver is valuable because that makes it easier for Mark Andrews. That makes it easier for Tylen Wallace, who I would I think will start on the outside opposite of um, Bateman in 11 personnel. And I think in the slot, either Devin Duvernay, James Prochet, depending on the situation. And that is a, in an article I wrote, I called it like a platoon system. So like if you're the Tampa Bay Rays, you don't necessarily have the best left fielder or the best center fielder, but you have pieces on your bench that you can put out a good lineup against left-handed pitching. You can put out a good lineup against right-handed pitching. And the Ravens, I think, can do the same thing of, hey, you know, it's second and four. Let's do a little gadgety play. Okay, Devin Duvernay, all-pro kick returner. All right, gotcha. All-pro punt returner, sorry. Gotcha. Or, hey, it's third and eight. We need this third down. All right, we got James Prochet. Won three out of four contested catches last year. Dog mentality, all the check boxes there. And I, I think Baltimore... The, the receiving core is relatively poor compared to the rest of the league, but it's not for lack of talent. It's it's just because there are so many good receivers in the NFL. Yeah, so I have a quick argument, and then I have a quick thing that will actually help you. Is mm -hmm. So four of the top five receivers in receiving yards last season were in the AFC or NFC Championship game. It was Cup was one who was in the NFC Championship game. Then it was Devontae Adams, who actually they didn't make it, sorry. Then it was Jamar Chase and Debo Samuel. So three of five were in the championship game. But then the good news for you is six was Mark Andrews. So, hey, 
Yeah. You do have a receiver who had who was up there in yards. I think Mark Andrews, by the way, he's on my fast team. Thank you for that. But he's one of the most underrated players in football. Like he just goes out every week with a quarterback who is again, he's a great he's a good quarterback, but in terms of throwing the ball is not one of the best in the league. And he still puts up monster numbers week after week for the Ravens. And I think that's something that just goes unscathed because and also he put up monster numbers with Tyler Huntley also. He, yeah. When Lamar was hurt, oh. he still put Heck, his, he had a great game with Josh out. Johnson. Yeah, his numbers might have went up, honestly, when Lamar got hurt. Like that might not even be a joke. And he just mm-hmm. produces no matter who the quarterback is, because he's just a, he's either a safety blanket, which he obviously was for all those players, but he also makes plays down the field, makes contested catches, is big mm-hmm. on third downs, and is big in the red zone. So I think that's someone when the best tight end in football gets talked about, he doesn't get talked about enough. I know his blocking might not be up to the standard that Kittle is good blocker. Is that he, he is not bad and, it's, blocker. and his receiving is right there with all three of them. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I do not agree with the Lamar Jackson sentiment because with Hollywood, it works because Lamar is not great outside the numbers down the field, but he is <clears throat> one of the best quarterbacks over the middle of the field, intermediate, like 15 yards down the field. He is on it. Play action, little, little roll out. And oh, game over. That that's a big reason why he won the MVP was his ability over the middle maybe of the field. Be, maybe it's because of Mark. Come on, give him some. Uh, hey, and yes, Andrew. <laughs> Andrew's had a really good year in 2019. I I think Andrews is kind of properly rated now as tight end three, and he's in that tier. Like, I don't think Darren Waller was ever in that tier of. Nah. Is he competitive with uh, Kelsey and Kittle? I think Andrews can. You can have the conversation. I would take Kelsey and Kittle. That's fine. But Andrews is at least in the conversation. If I'll, you made up that a poll, he's yeah. not getting skunked. You and know? I'll tell you also, like if he does, if he put has another season like he had this year, then he all then he's in the conversation because the reason you'd probably take Kittle and Kelsey, and I agree, is because they've done it for year after year after year. If Fair. he does it again this year, then he's legitimately there because if you can back it up, then. Yeah, I, I think that that's absolutely. And I'll say, fair. money talks. The Ravens will have to pay him big time if he does that again too. Uh, hey, he's already one of the top paid tight ends. See, this is what I said. You you save receiver costs. Receivers are ridiculously expensive. Like I've said, Cooper Cup, I would know. Yeah, but then you oh, pay Mark Andrews. You pay your All Pro left tackle, even though that hasn't worked out the last two years. You you pay your corners. You're about to pay Lamar. So, I I think there is a market inefficiency the Ravens are looking at and the Ravens are trying to take advantage of. And I think it can work. 